Here is an RC circuit. And what I want to do is to calculate the current as a function of time and the charge as a function of time on the capacitor and the voltage as a function of time across the capacitor. But I'm going to start off with a little demo so we can talk about some important things. So here I have a battery. This is actually two batteries. And, and yes, I do have magnets connecting them just to make things a little bit easier. And from the battery, it goes to this capacitor. This is a the one farad capacitor and then to this light bulb and the light bulb is like my resistor. Now the reason I'm using a light bulb is because uh, if the when the current is high the bulb brightness will be bright and as the current goes down then the, the bulb brightness will go down too. So by looking at the brightness we get a feeling for the value of the current if not the exact current that's fine. Okay so I'm going to plug this in and connect this and we can see what happens to the brightness of the bulb uh, as it goes on. So it starts off bright and you can see it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And still on a little bit. And it, as it gets dimmer, it takes longer to get dimmer. Okay, so it's not, it's not just shutting off. Okay, so it starts off bright and it goes dim. Now let's do this. I'm going to take this off and I'm going to connect it to just the capacitor. So I'm, gonna, I'm not using the battery anymore. Let's see what happens. I'm just going to touch it. Again, it starts off bright and then gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. Now, just as a comparison, what if I don't even use the capacitor at all? What if I connect the, uh, the, battery, the light bulb straight to the battery? You'll see it's as bright as it was when it started off. Uh, so when I first connected this uncharged capacitor, it's as though the capacitor wasn't even there. And as it goes on for a long time, it looks like this, where the, it's not even connected. And so this gives us an idea about the long, uh, the, the initial and final performance of a capacitor. Okay, so let's get started. Let's put away our toys. And let's start with RC circuits. Uh, so let's start with a capacitor uh, in general. What do we know about a capacitor? So there's my value, my symbol for a capacitor. If I have negative charge over here and positive charge over there, then, oh, that's, I missed one plus. Then I can say uh, delta VC is Q over C. So the change in potential delta V across a capacitor is equal to the total charge on one side. The total charge on the capacitor is zero. We just call that Q. And C, and C is the capacitance. So the capacitance of a capacitor depends on the physical parameters of that device. Uh, so we had a one farad capacitor, you can get other charges or other capacitances too. Now if I hook up a uh, simple RC circuit, so here's the simplest one I can make, it has a capacitor, a resistor, I'm going to use resistor instead of a light bulb, and a battery. And so this is R, that's C, and then this is going to be, I'm going to call this VB for the battery voltage. It's the change of potential and a lot of times uh, people will write this as EMF, but when I write this a lot, uh, it just gets messy, so I'm going to call it VB. So if Q at time T equals zero equals zero, there's no charge in the capacitor, then what's going to happen? Uh, it's, it's as all, as a, let, let me actually step back for a second. Let's write the loop rule for this equation, because there are two things in circuits that we can deal with. One is the loop rule that says that delta V around any loop is equal to zero. And the other is the junction rule which says I1 equals I2, where the current into a node is equal to the current out. But that's not really useful here. In the loop rule, I can start right here. And let's go around the loop. Now let's say that I just turned this on at any particular point. So the current, the conventional current would be going that way. That would make a buildup of charge positive and negative. Uh, and I can add up the voltages. So going this way, I go from the negative side of the battery to the positive. So the change in potential across that battery is going to be VB. And then I'm going up here, and I go from the positive to the negative side of the capacitor. So that's going to be a negative change in potential. I'm going to write that as negative Q over C. So that's the change of potential. And then I'm going in the same direction as the electric current. And so I'll have a negative potential drop across the resistor minus I R and that has to equal zero. Okay now let's think about if Q is equal to zero 
if I have an uncharged capacitor at time t equals zero, q is zero, then this is my equation. Right, that's zero, so I get vb minus ir equals zero. That looks like this. Just a simple resistor hooked up to a capacitor, I mean a battery. And so you, we would have a current, we, it, it's some, everything that we know, right? It acts like the capacitor is not even there. Now, as charge builds up over here, as the charge increases, because there's current going, so I'm going to get more charge, this term is going to get bigger. If this term gets bigger and that term is constant, the battery voltage is constant, then, and all of these add up to zero, that means that this part is going to get smaller. Which means this part has to get smaller if, in order for them to add up to zero. And if R is constant, that means I has to decrease. So right there from looking at this, as Q increases, I has to decrease. We see that. And if Q uh, is big as it could get, then this whole thing would be zero. Right? This would char a charge capacitor, then this is zero and the current is zero too. Okay, so what we want to do is to use this equation and use it to solve uh, for Q as a function of time. With that, I can solve for I as a function of time. There's a couple other things I need to know. I know the voltage across a resistor. I know the voltage across a capacitor. The one other thing is the definition of current. I is delta Q over delta T, but if I take the limit as delta T goes zero, I get a derivative dQ dt. And I can put that in up here. I get VB minus Q over C minus dQ dt R equals zero. And this is a differential equation that only has Qs and Ts in it, and that's what we're gonna solve. Okay, so let's solve this. So let me write the equation again. VB minus Q over C minus DQ DT R equals zero. Oh, and you haven't had differential equations yet. That's fine. This is a simple differential equation. The class differential equations can get pretty bonkers crazy, but we're gonna, we're gonna this one I think is, you'll be fine. What I want to do is get all the Q stuff on one side of the equation and all the T stuff on the other side. So the first thing I'm going to do is to add this term to both sides. And so I get a crooked paper. I get uh, VB minus Q over C equals DQ DT R. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by uh, DT over R and I get no, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1 over R. So I get uh, VB over R minus QC, Q over RC equals DQ DT. Now I want to get a common denominator between these two. So I can multiply this by C over C. And that gives me VB C minus Q over RC equals dq dt. So <clears throat> here's a t term, here's a q term, here's a q term. So let's cross multiply, which I normally hate, but I think we are mature enough that we understand that we're actually dividing both sides by this and multiplying both sides by that. Uh, and that's how we're going to get this cross multiplication. So that gives us dq over vbc minus q equals uh, dt, we well, put 1 over rc times dt. Now this side only depends on time. This side only depends on charge. That's good. I do want to make one small modification. I want to multiply this by negative 1. And if I do that, I have to multiply this by negative 1. That gives me dq over, now if I do this on the bottom, I get negative vbc plus q. So I'll write that as q minus VBC equals negative one over RC DT. Since this side only depends on Q and this side only depends on T, I can integrate both sides. So let's integrate this and integrate this. Now I want to make a, a definite integral. So I'm going to integrate from uh, 
q equals zero to q equals q prime, some final q. And this will be from t equals zero to t equals t prime, some final t. And, and you, this, you can't say to t equals to t uh, because you're integrating over t, uh, and, and that's just rude. Mathematically, it's rude, so don't do that. I'm going to call it t prime, and then I'll come, I'll, after I'm finished, we'll change it, that back to t. Uh, so these aren't terribly difficult. Let's start with this first one. I'm going to rewrite that as negative 1 over rc, uh, 0 to t prime, uh, dt. And we can look this up in an integral table. I'm just kidding. It's, it's pretty easy. The integral of dt is this t. Uh, so this is going to be negative 1 over rc from t equals t prime, so t prime, minus t equals 0, 0. So I get negative 1 over rc t prime. Now this side <clears throat> might look a little intimidating, but it's not. So one of the things with, with calculus is that if you practice things enough, you can kind of get an intuition about what steps to take. You might take some bad steps along the way, but the more mistakes you make, the, the better your intuition will get. So right here I see I have a dq term and I have a q plus a constant. I could do something like u equals q minus vb times c. If I do that, I can take the derivative of u, du, I have to take the derivative of this side. So, and not with respect to anything, this is just a derivative. Uh, so the derivative of q is going to be dq, and then the derivative of negative vbc is zero, because it's a constant. So I can write this integral as zero, I'll just leave off the limits right now, dq over q minus vbc is equal to the integral of du over u. And I know the integral of du over u is the natural log of u. So now let's put in our limits of integration. Uh, this is going to be equal to uh, the natural log. I'm putting u back in. So it's the natural log of q minus vbc from q equals 0 to q prime. So this is going to be natural log of q prime minus vbc minus natural log of q is 0, so just negative vbc. And this is, again, this isn't mathematically rude. This is physics rude, okay? Because natural log, I can't take the, if I have charge in coulombs, and vbc would be in coulombs, this thing is in coulombs, I can't take the natural log of something with units. It's impossible, okay? Um, so, but I can write this. Remember that the natural log of A minus the natural log of B is equal to the natural log of A over B. And that, that's a better way of writing it because then this has no units. So I get uh, the natural log of Q prime minus VBC over negative VBC. That was my left-hand side. I, I'm just double checking. Yeah, that's the same thing. I'm just taking this divided by the, oh, there is a negative? Oh, that's minus, right. Okay. And then I'm going to set this equal to this. Equals negative 1 over RC T prime. Now here, I've, I've integrated, I've done with that variable Q and T, so I'm actually going to switch these back to Q and T, uh, just to rename a variable, but, but that was just a temporary change so that we didn't uh, anger the, the math deity. Okay. Uh, so this is, I'm done. I have Q as a function of time, but I don't really have it in a nice form. Uh, what I'd like to do is get rid of the natural log, and so I can do that by raising this uh, to the power, e to the power of this, right? Because natural log is the inverse of exponential. So if I take the exponential of this, that undoes the natural log. But then I have to do it to this side too. So that means this side just becomes q minus vbc over negative vbc. And then this is going to be equal to e to the negative uh, t over rc. Now let's multiply both sides by this and I get 
uh, Q minus VBC equals negative VBC e to the negative t over rc. And now I'm going to add that to both sides and I get q equals vbc minus vbc e to the negative t over rc. Let me just factor out this term. And I get q as a function of time is vbc times 1 minus e to the negative t over rc. But I didn't really care about q. Um, I kind of do. I, I care about V and I. Okay. So, but if I know the charge on the capacitor as a function of time, I can find VC as a function of time is just QT divided by C. So if I divide this by C, I get VB, VC as a function of time is VB times 1 minus E to the negative T over RC. What about the current? I wanted the current. Well, remember, I equals dq dt. So I can take the derivative of this as a function of time, and that will give me the current. And let's actually use this form right here. So if I take the derivative of this with, the function, with respect to time, I get the derivative of vbc is 0, because it's a constant. And then I get uh, minus vbc times, that's a constant times the derivative of the exponential e to the negative t, c, t over rc is e to the negative t over rc. But I have to also multiply by the derivative of this. So the derivative of negative t over rc is negative 1 over rc. So I get negative 1 over rc e to the negative t over rc. And here the c's cancel. So I get i as a function of t is equal to the negatives cancel, VB over R E to the negative T over RC. So there's my that, there's my that, and there's my that. Now let's just check though, okay? So I know that when I close that circuit at T equals zero, I want to check at T equals zero and T equals infinity. At T equals zero, I know the current should be VB over R. So if I put in t equals 0 right there, I get e to the 0, and that's e to the 0 is 1. So i of 0 is equal to vb over r. That's good. And now let's check as uh, t goes to infinity. As t goes to infinity, this uh, goes to a large number, but it's to raised to the negative power, so this goes to 0. So if that goes to 0, then this goes to 0. So i uh, I'll put as it approaches infinity, uh, it approaches zero. So that's good. Okay. And also up here we can check at t equals zero, the battery voltage should, I mean the capacitor should have a zero volt voltage across it because it's not charged. So if I put in t equals zero here, I get one minus one, which is zero. So that's good. And then as t gets really large, that goes to zero and I get VB. Again, that makes sense. So there you go. The current, the voltage, and the charge on the capacitor as a function of time. You can use the same idea for a discharging capacitor, uh, but I'll do that maybe in another video. What I want to do next, I'm going to make the next video, the next part of this, I'm going to solve the same problem, but I'm going to do it uh, numerically. So I'm going, to, I'm going to break it into small time steps and solve it, but that will be my next video, and I'm sure you'll be there, so I will see you there, and that's it.